Thank you. Uh, uh, it's my uh, absolute pleasure to be here. I am greatly honored that I'm invited uh, at this, uh, I believe, the, one of the most uh, promising conferences in the field of uh, visual arts, visual art education, and visual art related artistic research. And this moment at the European higher education area. And uh, uh, my dear colleagues, professors, students, uh, I never, never expected better introduction to my topics that, uh, that they had before. Because if we are thinking about the uh, impact of uh, rising tools of artificial intelligence, the impact on our field uh, of uh, education, our research and practice, so it's uh, some kind of alarm, some kind of alarm we really should deal with. But first thing first, if you think about uh, our relations between artificial intelligence and art and artistic uh, research, we should uh, answer uh, ourselves uh, what the artistic research is, because we used such term for about three, 30, 30 years, uh, mostly in Europe, now in other parts of the world as well. But uh, of course, uh, the content of uh, and semantics of this uh, term uh, really differs around the world, around schools, around countries, and. Uh, uh, <coughs> let's uh, uh, let, let's think this little exercise. Uh, uh, how much uh, of us uh, are practicing artists, and how much of our practicing researchers uh, who is dealing with field of artistic research? Uh, uh, please raise hands who are practicing artists who, who conducted art practice last year. Thank you. Now, please raise hands uh, who conducted artistic research last year. And uh, of course, uh, no raise hands who conducted traditional academic research last year. So, mostly uh, there are uh, intersections between uh, people who conduct one or another kind of practice or research. And uh, from these intersections also arise the first questions, how we could uh, create demarcation, how we could find boundaries, or is it necessary to find such boundaries? And of course, the uh, uh, easy way to say is that artistic practices uh, are somehow uh, related to <coughs> creation of outcomes, so for creation of impact, emotional or artistic or aesthetic impact, or creation of some kind of product or service that could impact uh, receivers. Uh, at the same time, thinking about artistic research, we could uh, mention and uh, sometimes probably write into our uh, school documents, papers, uh, so school strategies that artistic research differs from artistic practice because uh, in the field of artistic research we are developing new knowledge. It's more like a you know, knowledge production and we could define methods. Uh, like in the case with artistic practice, uh, the issue of methods is a uh, little, little more risky because uh, for centuries artists are using ad hoc methods to, to achieve uh, their aims. But uh, in the field of research, uh, we somehow, somehow uh, have this feeling that uh, methods could be defined beforehand and applied to our aims. Uh, uh, in the field of research, we are developing questions. Uh, research questions, what we are going to answer shows its research. And uh, it also differs from the art question in a new way because uh, when artists ask questions, it's not necessary to answer these questions. So sometimes art just should ask questions. When we conduct 
artistic research, we expect that we could ask questions that we could answer in some way uh, by the means of research. Of course, uh, if we could uh, conduct research in, in any, yeah, we could conduct research in any field. When, when we think about uh, artistic research, we could conduct research on the field of individual artists uh, uh, dealing with uh, her or his uh, self reflection, traumas, uh, uh, self consciousness, and other aspects. We could uh, deal with wider context of uh, theories, we could deal with wider context of. Uh, environment, society, economical uh, uh, aspects. We could deal also with uh, specific technical aspects of uh, artistic uh, practices and trying to answer by artistic uh, uh, research to these questions. But uh, the, the most uh, uh, defining moment is that we are creating new knowledge uh, uh, in the way to answer these problems, we are creating new knowledge. So this contextual focus is quite important, but this contextual focus uh, uh, allows us to narrow, narrow our experience and uh, narrow to create some kind of demarcation. But this demarcation is, as I said, time is synergy between practice and, and research. Uh, of course, we also should establish some kind of demarcation between artistic research and traditional academic research. Mostly, we are stressing that artistic research is more open uh, being conducted outside walls, being conducted by the people for people, and scientific traditional research is more like institution boundaries uh, enclosed, and therefore uh, <coughs> there is also source for some kind of, uh, you know, not not uh, everybody in our society believe to society, scientists, uh, the universities, to uh, scientific institutions, and it's uh, probably because of the type of the way of the research is being conducted. We believe that uh, by the means of artistic research we could open uh, these uh, doors <coughs> and cover this gap. Oh, when we think about the next part of uh, subject we are addressing now, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, also, uh, also we'll, we will continue with this small exercise. Who is you? Uh, who, Use the uh, large language model like a ChatGPT. Who is you using uh, uh, this paid version of ChatGPT? ChatGPT Plus. A little bit less. It's uh, also sometimes quite uh, important part thinking about digital cup, uh, the possibility to use such tools and and apply. Uh, and who is you? Uh, uh, used uh, uh, generative uh, models like uh, diffusion models for image generations. Uh, uh, among these models, Mitchell, Dale 2, uh, Stability Diffusion, uh, pretty much good result. Imagine developed by Google. Uh, only place where to use inside Canvas, yes. And uh, uh, this also uh, show uh, extension by which uh, artificial intelligence tools are inside our e even everyday life. And uh, I really believe uh, these tools would be even more broad, uh, embedded in the way how we are living, thinking, and particularly important how we are working as an artist, how we are researching as artistic researchers, and how we are also researchers as academic researchers. Thinking about uh, uh, artificial intelligence tools, we could make some small distinction between artificial intelligence generated art, where we put most of the decisions and we are somehow expect uh, something unexpected from the models we are using, like uh, just providing uh, quite simple prompt uh, in this uh, moment of mid journey, Karl Marx as robot, or sometimes more uh, more sophisticated prompt where uh, <coughs> artificial intelligence uh, is more like assisted tools that we are trying to um, try to drive, try to steer to our uh, goals that we uh, was defined before. 
And thinking about these two aspects, how we could use tools of artificial intelligence, we could start imagining how we could use artificial intelligence generated in assisted art in the field of artistic research. But it's like a first, uh, first dreams, first uh, expectations, just uh, first iteration. We could use uh, artificial intelligence as creative partner, and uh, at this moment, uh, while the tool of full journey, we ask it to describe image, and then we use this uh, description as a prompt to create that set of next images. And, uh, well, somehow, to overcome uh, this uh, diversity problem in, in uh, generated images and provided us this possibility to have different view, uh, different output than uh, it was expected thinking about 17th century art. Uh, we could uh, explore different styles, provide the same prompt and uh, uh, get some outputs in, inspired or impacted by the popular culture around. We could uh, ask uh, tools to provide description at this moment, like uh, how the image of uh, Vermeer or Galvez's pearl earring was described by ChatGPT uh, plus forks as an image, how it was described by how the color was analyzed from this image, distribution of color, kind of color, and uh, then we asked uh, ChatGPT plus to generate uh, image based on this uh, distribution of color and we get some kind of perfect replica of the girl with pearl ring. Uh, perfect replica in the sense that the same amount of colors in the same uh, distribution of colors uh, or there's something different. So we could open reflections about what we are dealing, what we are creating and how it is related and how we could another point of view on the things that we uh, like expected to be so, in one way, we could uh, uh, create cross-disciplinary research and get output uh, that also describes this image uh, with uh, uh, Vermeer, uh, reproduction of Vermeer, girl with uh, her ring, but described different in the language of Python, uh, programming language of Python that would also to create some amount of data that could be delivered. Uh, extracted from this image. We could uh, use uh, artificial intelligence tools open discussions. Discussions about uh, <clears throat> place of art, place of art in our everyday culture. We could uh, never use uh, original image uh, to discuss about stopping oil, but we could generate image where the, the girl is looking at the oil rigs as such. And of course, we hope that we could uh, that we could somehow uh, somehow expand our boundaries. Expand the boundaries, uh, meeting something unexpected. Uh, the same prompt that, uh, that was used in the mid journey, Karl Marx's robot was used in the full journey to create movie. All this movie, all this uh, five uh, shots uh, that were combined by the robot itself, uh, music accompanied, was just part of its creation. And uh, uh, if you are looking for the, some kind of metaphor, ironical comments, or paradoxical, output. Uh, it's just uh, right in the time to use. But as I always discuss with my students, before you start to use artificial intelligence tools, there are several ethical questions that you should address. First, are artificial intelligence tools uh, ordinarily from our point of view is black box. Uh, sometimes also from the point of view of uh, programmers themselves. Uh, not all that they could explain, but uh, it's but black box, black box problem. Uh, as I mentioned, data privacy and consent to use some kind of data. Authorships, uh, intellectual property. It's uh, absolutely burning questions. There are several open processes and we could put in 
like bias and the representations bias uh, that particularly could affect your outcome. Uh, as uh, Amy absolutely elegantly pointed out before, that uh, uh, the way how information is being generated is absolutely <coughs> dependent on the information being prepared before. So not always we know how the models were trained. Uh, the evaluation of human creativity we saw around the world that uh, there are plenty of times being stressed that something is being created by uh, artificial intelligence and uh, diminishing the role of the human before. Uh, all of the <coughs> contribution, uh, uh, like in this uh, well known example of, from the open eye, one of the first like, uh, ad being used uh, last year in August when open eye put it. The target to on the you know market of ideas, access and inclusivity. Of course, not everybody have access to these tools. It's sometimes expensive, sometimes it's uh, technological uh, expertise related, and uh, and so this uh, gap of digital uh, of creativity and accessibility is always here. Environmental <coughs> impact. Uh, People are thinking about uh, thinking less, but using artificial intelligence for this, uh, ordinary web search is like a five times time more uh, with impact on the environment cre cre created, uh, not like a, our origin or uh, search by Google search or something else. So we always should think twice before we ask something to artificial intelligence. Of course, uh, impact on the employability and workforce, something that we always could address when we are dealing with our students. Of course, uh, you could have different positions and different attitudes toward artificial intelligence, but you should put in mind that people will use it around and also uh, it will diminish some jobs before, but also will create some new job opportunities. Skill development and training. Uh, we should bear in mind that sometimes we could have lost some skills because of technologies that came in. It's an uh, emergency. Big shift in our related roles. Uh, the new kind of artists came in. Uh, we could uh, <coughs> say them like uh, prompt operators. Pro prompt operators is more important, like artists uh, was before. Collaboration and disciplinarity. And also, not all things is bad one. Uh, there is also a good side of artificial intelligence coming in. First, I think we could think about the increase of accessibility to artistic tools. Uh, many people who previously had no possibilities to create artworks now are empowered by artificial intelligence and could create themselves. Also, many people who had no possibilities previously study art. Uh, no have possibility to study art by the means of artificial intelligence. Get insight into artistic styles and to artists and uh, uh, information about artists and artistic styles uh, circulated around uh, global uh, internet uh, during the last year, <coughs> recent uh, several times because of uh, artificial intelligence tools. Personalization and customization, you could create your own artificial intelligence tools. And you could use uh, them for the better public engagement and participation. And also impact on art uh, market. Uh, from one point it would be quite negative one. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we uh, saw that uh, people are, you know, the, the price of handmade art is just going up. It's not going down. But also there is uh, open possibility for people to buy some kind of uh, digital replicas of copies that they had not previously expected. Of course, it's, uh, uh, it's drive us to the uh, question that we uh, put uh, at the beginning of our um, presentation, the potential of artificial intelligence generated and assisted art to transform artistic research. First thing first, uh, uh, about four years ago, I borrowed from the machine learning the way how to describe by diagrammatical tools uh, artistic research as such. Uh, uh, it allowed 
to create uh, three different diagrams uh, which of them describe some aspects of artistic research. One of them is uh, the relational aspects of putting artistic research in relation in some kind of institutions, operators, uh, or scenarios and role players. Uh, another is propositional uh, uh, relations. When we think about uh, artistic research as uh, some kind of uh, interaction between art and research, uh, or uh, something that has been uh, like a un united aspect of art and research, or something that has been excluded from the art and research. And it's provided us with four options, uh, four options that uh, I definitely believe are uh, somehow being in the same time, in the same place, uh, because always when we think about artistic research as this, at the start of our lecture, we are try create some kind of demarcation, and then we create some kind of synergy of, of this aspect. And of course, we could think about artistic research as a, some kind of procedure, some kind of procedure that's related to acquiring of new knowledge. Uh, but uh, there are some also some worrying examples. Uh, we know the biggest resource for artistic research is research catalog. On the research catalog, we could find that there are 72 projects uh, that mention the use of artificial intelligence in some way or another way. I'm not going to specific, specifically analyze uh, each of these uh, or any of these projects. Uh, seven of them mention the use of Mid Journey. Uh, and this uh, number somehow varies. Uh, at the morning, I found uh, only five projects with Mid Journey, but uh, I, I, I I will give my word that two days ago there were seven projects where the mid-journey was mentioned. But of course, people are uh, free to change uh, text that accompany the project. And these uh, five mentioned use of ChatGPT, five mentioned use of DALI, and uh, for biggest surprise, nobody mentioned use of stability diffusion. Uh, but at the same time, stability diffusion itself created absolutely new kind of phenomena. There are, uh, because the uh, stability AI provided in open source this model, there are hundreds or even thousands of models being trained by the enthusiasts around the globe, and they produce millions of uh, different kind of images per day, and at the same time, it's like something that uh, colleagues from the field of artistic research uh, is not always uh, admit as possible way how we could use them. Yeah, we could easily use to train these models by our own or, or any other artistic work. So it uh, brings us to some kind of conclusions. One of them is uh, any, any time when we are using artistic uh, research uh, that would be assisted by artificial intelligence, uh, this kind of research we should define as ethical inquiry. Ethical aspects always should be put uh, in the first row. Uh, technologies should be used uh, to create more democratic and collaborative world. It also should be some kind of uh, uh, some kind of rule that we could follow. Uh, and uh, looking for the future directions and opportunities. Uh, we could think about artificial intelligence as a tool of, for exploration, as a medium, as a subject, and uh, particularly put uh, in our focus this new phenomenon, uh, prompt designing and prompt engineering, when we are sometimes uh, conducting, and not only us artists, but thousands of people, or probably tens of thousands, or, or hundreds of thousands, or millions of people around the world, Law conducted uh, artistic research when they are asking ChatGPT, imagine, imagine that you are a lawyer, imagine that you are political, imagine that you are academic, imagine that you are writer, film director, movie director, imagine that you are SC artist, and uh, in such a way you get the output you expected or, or you are hoped that you would get such kind of output. And this uh, uh, bring us to the new frontier, uh, to the new ultimate goal of use of uh, artistic research together with artificial intelligence. Uh, the goal 
to develop our metacognition, metacognition skills, so, because these skills will be absolutely valuable in the future. And uh, Met oh. metacognition, or the ability to reflect on one's own thought processes, is a key capacity that allows artists to develop self-awareness and advance their craft. By integrating AI systems that can analyze creative workflows, artistic research has the potential to take metacognitive reflection to new heights. And of course, uh, in the same time also, <laughs> as many of uh, other use of um, and applications of artificial intelligence, the previous example also raise plenty of questions. So how we could imagine artificial intelligence why we usually use a uh, uh, female uh, uh, image uh, to provide, uh, is it more friendly, is it the way how we could uh, have impact on auditorium or another thing, and how this hybrid reality will, will arise in the future. And of course, uh, uh, trying to conclude, to make a conclusion on something that is impossible to conclude at this moment, because uh, most of the questions uh, I tried to mention uh, definitely are open one. Uh, they are opening the way how we could think, uh, apply, and uh, conduct uh, uh, researches by the means of artificial intelligence. And I really, I really imagine that uh, tools will develop in a very fast way, uh, actual at these moments, and so, and. Uh, Opening new possibilities, opening new uh, new challenges. I, I really think that uh, artists who conducted artistic research and artistic practice should never abstain from these questions, uh, particularly very critical questions, and uh, find the critical way how to address, how to reflect, how to find <laughs> different aspects, and uh, how to embed in their own research and practices and at the same time to keep critical distance to these tools. Thank you. Thank you very much for attention and my disclaimer uh, about use of the tools that I also always stress on in my, my students, always open all the tools that you use for your creative work. Uh, it's the only way how to preserve human integrity and academic integration. Fantastic presentation. I'd love to have a long discussion with you. We'll be on a panel. I wanted to ask you your opinion on language tagging. Something I think about a lot and am concerned about a lot is reducing artistic expressions to language tagging and the language thinking mind. Because Art is not of the language thinking mind. And a lot of these processes require us go, that we go through the language thinking mind. So actually it's very good for us to become better prompt engineers, to be able to articulate what we want. At the same time, what is lost in that process? There's no right or wrong answer. I'm curious to hear your opinion or hear a little bit more about what you think about like the image language tagging and going over from those different kinds of thinkings. Thank you. It's an excellent question, one of the best questions that could arise from the use of artificial intelligence in art and artistic practice. Of course, art is something that we are dealing with some kind of unspeakable, unarticulated experience, and this is the role of art. And as one of the, my specialty for years was visual semiotics. So I, I definitely could stress on some things that we could translate and some things that uh, remains untranslated uh, in images and language. But at the same time, uh, dealing in social space, uh, dealing with other people and uh, communicating about art nowadays, we are using language so much and so extensively that I'm a little afraid is that uh, from the point of many uh, users of society or many also members of respective artistic communities, it's uh, art dealing or, or art uh, creating and uh, it's more like a language operations. And uh, this is risky because we, we think about the most uh, popular symbolic language operations being conducted in society. 
its political operations, political and civil issues language. And in order for art not to lose or not to lose the uh, soul, uh, we should keep in mind that art is not only something that we could always translate in language, but some kind of unarticulated experience that you could get from the meeting with art form. One, one more short question. Thank you for the presentation, it was quite interesting. Uh, so being in the uh, realm of education, uh, this raises the question of evaluating the papers or the artistic practices of the students, both undergraduate and graduate level. So I mean, just uh, this can be a, a subject for a longer discussion, but I would like to know shortly, what do you think? And do we also need to develop a new strategy for evaluating the papers of the students? Thank you, very good question. Of course, uh, not only need, I started to use new strategies for evaluating student papers uh, this springtime because of the, uh, because of the chat GPT. And uh, one quite a simple way how I add to my, um, not my uh, exercise uh, of uh, creation papers, I asked the students to create half of this paper, paper by the use of ChatGPT and half by themselves and to compare, uh, critically compare. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I got the possibility for last question, so thank you very much. And it's actually very much linking with the, with the previous question. Um, <coughs> So looking, I would say, looking from the perspective of education, as kind of you, you say, you're working with this student, um, it's easier sharing the kind of the, 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 the coherence of, the, of evaluating the written text. It's obviously very often easy to score because it's better than the students would be writing it themselves. That's at least uh, uh, my uh, impression. But I would be interested in the kind of wider image of this. All of the tools you presented, what kind of, does it bring with itself change in the curriculum, in the kind of in the way how we're teaching the disciplines? Is it is it just additional tool which we kind of we training students for for additional prompts, additional way of interacting, or is it something embedded in the deeper changes in all of the structures, how we teaching art, how we teaching design, how we teaching maybe humanities altogether? Sorry, that's probably a really long question in the end. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, very good question. Uh, at this moment, of course, uh, we could uh, just mention the methods that we are using actually. Of course, there will be more methods that come in. The, one of the first methods that uh, arise from the use of artificial intelligence tools is fast prototyping. Uh, in our academy, because there are, we're trying to visual artists and also designers, fast prototyping usually uh, was uh, area for designer training, but now with these tools I also ask my students in visual art uh, to create some kind of art fast prototypes uh, that uh, previously were mentioned like a paper prototypes, but nowadays they could create prototypes by using these uh, generative artificial intelligence tools. And they could critically analyze, did they like it or did they not like it? Because, for example, this mid-journey, they created some kind of aesthetical uh, program that's being uh, with high impact around the globe. But as a result, uh, <coughs> uh, you, could, uh, you, know, you could, in the exhibitions or other places, you could also pass the select. Uh, this was inspired and created by prototyping. In, uh, even painters use the mid-journey to prototype their, their ideas. But, uh, I believe that the best thing is uh, to look at this critically. Yeah. So, critical, critical attitude to past prototyping. Uh, two methods.